There's a 3D artist that is criminally underrated and frankly just not shown off enough here on YouTube and that is Fab365 who makes these amazing support free models that are all mostly print in place and then you snap together and assemble and what's even crazier is a lot of the files are actually free and the files that I'm going to be printing and showing you here today are their free Star Destroyer file set that I've started printing on two of my larger Elegoo Neptune 3D printers at 0.2 layer height scaled up to 200% of the original file size. And again, I'm printing these all at 0.2 layer height with about a 10% infill and everything so far is looking really nice and clean on these three prints, no supports. Even scaled up at 200% scale so far, I'm seeing zero issues where I'm needing supports for any of these files. I'm also trying something different with these sets of prints using these Neptune 4 3D printers that have those huge fans on the back of them. I saw some folks online mentioning that they've actually turned those off and have been printing at their standard print settings and still getting really nice looking prints minus the loudness from the fans. And in fact, I'm not typically printing as fast as these machines can probably can really go. I'm maxing it out or somewhere around 150 to 200 millimeters per second for the print speed, which so far I'm seeing really great results even with the fans turned off. And while these prints are finishing up, I want to say a big thank you to Elegoo for sponsoring today's video. They're the makers of the Neptune 4 Plus and the Neptune 4 Max large format, fast and affordable 3D printers that I'm using to print all of these parts here over the better part of about two and a half days for these to print. Elegoo also produces some great looking affordable filament and I'm gonna be using their matte black PLA for this project. If you're interested in more information about any of Elegoo's products, you'll find links to those down below. So I've gotten everything printed here across my Neptune 4 Plus and the Neptune 4 Max. And thankfully I had the Neptune 4 Max on hand because there was one part in particular that is just gonna require that when scaled up to 200% of the original size of these particular files. And again, no supports required on them. I am seeing a tiny bit of stringing on some of the parts after printing, but thankfully you can just knock that back with a heat gun and get rid of any of the excess stringing. And as I mentioned, the files for this are free for you to go and download that I'll have links to down below. However, I have also printed the stand for the Star Destroyer, and this is a paid file. So there's a mix of free files, paid files, and if you pay for files, you'll get access to more free downloads as well. So I think the stand was $3, and I'm glad to send any money I can to Fab365 here for this. Again, a support free print file that comes uh, where you're gonna have the little display here as well as there's little ships here that you can print that are gonna go along with this just to help show off the scale of the size of the Star Destroyer here. But what I wanted to call out about the stand is because I know this thing is gonna be kind of heavy when it's fully assembled, I wanted to mention in Orca Slicer a way that I went about making sure that the very top of the stand where the peg is is really nice and sturdy. Now, I did the same 0.2 layer height for this and a 10% infill. However, when I got towards the top of the actual stand, in the slicer, I ended up adding a print modifier by right-clicking on the file, selecting a modifier, and then positioning a little box there towards the top where I could then set specific settings for this. So I changed the infill from 10% to 25% infill, and then I made another modifier box and placed that towards the very top where the actual peg was starting or right before it was starting, and change that to 75% infill. And again, was doing that just because I wanna have a little bit more support there for the very top where this peg is connecting to the frame of the stand. And before I even started printing this project, I initially thought I'd print it in Elegoo's matte gray PLA and then just kind of be done with it after assembling. However, I thought it would look maybe even better printed in black and then I could add a gray wash over the, the, like a dry brush over the top of this, where we'd still see some of the black underneath it in some of those cracks and crevices. I'm not entirely sure how this is gonna turn out, but I'm gonna attempt to dry brush this entire print. And I'm now thinking, 
I might try to dry brush this before doing the assembly. In order to get prepped for some of this dry brushing, I ended up binge watching a bunch of Artist Opus videos here on YouTube that I'll have linked down below. And one thing that I saw that they were using is one of these dry brush palettes that you can brush your brush against with some of the paint to make sure that you've got the levels right. Well, I didn't have one of those, so I went into Shaper 3D and designed one real quick that I could go off and print. This is like an hour and a half print there. And yeah, if you're interested, I'll have links to the file down below. There are, I'm sure, much better file options than the one that I've designed, but it's just a, a quick whole bunch of different shapes that I can test my paints against before actually applying it to my 3D print. And the brushes that I'm gonna be using aren't anything special, these are just some really cheap makeup brushes. And because this is gonna be dry brushing, I'm using some of these thicker paints that I picked up from my local game shop. These are these Citadel paints, then all these different gray tones. I'm gonna be starting with the darkest and then working my way up to the lightest. All right, I don't know how well you can see the difference here, but uh, this is actually a great color. This dark, dark gray is close to the black, but a, a slightly lighter tone. And I'm just, taking my brush, getting a little bit of paint on there and just kind of lightly tapping across the surfaces of the entire print. I'm just trying to give this a nice even coating, no brush stroking or anything like that, just lightly tapping across the top of the print. And here, after covering you know half of it, I'm hoping you can kind of see this side and the top portion here have the gray coating on it versus this portion down here does not. And then it's time to take that exact same technique of lightly splotching on the dark gray paint and applying it to all of the other 3D prints. The next is this mid gray dawn stone. And this is where I'm really starting this dry brush technique where I'm gonna put some paint on the palette there. Then I start dabbing it around the brush and then basically trying to brush off a good bit of that gray stone paint and then take it to the print where I'm gonna be layering on some of that lightly brushing over some of the raised areas of our print, revealing some of those details. Also to give this a little bit more of a flat gray look, I am rubbing this all into the side paneling there in a swirling motion. I'm not entirely sure what my technique is here, but it seems to be working okay for this project. And there are a lot of prints to cover here, and I was honestly a little bit worried that I wasn't gonna have enough paint for this entire project, but so far, these three small containers were more than enough to be able to cover all of these different prints. And then the lightest gray that I'm gonna be using is this Celestra Gray. And again, I'm using this dry brush technique, but going very faint with this since it's the lightest and I don't want to whitewash everything. I just want the details to really pick up on the corner and the edges as I'm brushing over them. Again, making sure to brush off a whole lot of the excess paint directly on that paint palette. And one extra thing that I did was I took that same Dawn Stone white paint, but I, didn't remove as much of it as I did previously. And I went back over a few very specific areas just to try and again, further highlight and bring those out when visually looking at the pieces. And here are all of the finished dry brushed prints that I can now start the assembly process on. I'm gonna be following the assembly video by Fab365 that shows how all of this snaps together. This thing is so extremely well engineered. Again, no supports needed for this. I didn't use rims for a lot of the prints. Some of them I did, so I had to clean those up, but I should be able to more or less snap these pieces all together. However, if I need to, I've got a little three glue handy as well. And check out my massive Star Destroyer ship. This turned out incredible. I am so happy with the results of dry brushing this and the 3D printing. This just turned out incredible. I wanted a really large Star Wars ship and you can't get much bigger than this. One thing that I might end up doing is going back and using a syringe with some 3D gloop inside of it just to add a little bit more glue to the front section of the print here. I'm not sure because of how it's scaled or how it's snapped together or what. There's just a little bit of give in a few of these areas where it dips ever so slightly. So I'm probably gonna add a little bit of gloop to that just to keep it nice and firm and secured and stiff here at this angle. But overall, everything else just came together so well and 
I'm just honestly in shock of how good of a design this is. It's just a well orchestrated 3D print that's easy to print. Again, no supports or anything like that. I think this took about three rolls of filament for me to print over the course of two and a half days over two of the Neptune 3D printers. And I ended up spending about two to three hours dry brushing this. And if you're intimidated by painting, I really recommend dry brushing. This whole process of painting this was really straightforward. I had a movie going, I was watching Equalizer 3 while dry brushing. I probably could have got this done a little bit faster if I wasn't watching Denzel. Oh, and one of the coolest things I forgot to mention is the whole stand for this. So this 3D printed stand, again, no supports needed for the stand. And this should slot into place here. There we go. All lined up and the extra support there that I added for the internal structure of the stand, I believe is gonna help give this a little bit more rigidity and stability here to hold this massive Star Destroyer in place. I also wanna say a big thank you to all my Patreon supporters for your continued support of me making videos here on the interwebs. If you're interested in things like the 3D printer settings that I used for these 3D prints, you can find those over in my Patreon. And again, if you're interested in printing one of these files for yourself, I'll have links down below to fab 365 site and directly to the files which again are free to download you do have to buy the stand but that's a small price to pay for this amazing 3d print hey thanks so much for watching all and i'll see you next time started printing here at 0.2 layer height and it's looking so good scaled up at 200 percent of the original size